Well, I did pick up a bunch of mail. It's right here. I don't know if you can see it. But we're gonna have to leave that for another vlog because I'm going to Belgrade tomorrow. I am packing as we speak. I'm going again with my choir. This is my choir. Last time we won the gold medal in Belgrade. You should watch this video if you didn't because it was pretty fun. And this year we're called as the honorary guest so we can sing for all the choirs that are gonna compete this year since we're the finalists from last year. Since I've been wanting to step up my vlog game a little bit, I'm not gonna do the regular open-ended vlog. I kinda like film everything and then put something together and then kind of create a storyline. This time I'm gonna set a goal for myself which I have to fulfill one way or the other and that is creating a time lapse. I've been wanting to do a hyperlapse actually. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I got a message. I've been experimenting with them. You can see that video from when I was at the camps during the summer but this time I want to do a full-fledged proper hyperlapse of some cool element that we're gonna find in the city. So we made it to Belgrade and our, this hostel isn't as dingy as this place looks. In fact, the last video had a clip of the hotel. I'm gonna go out and shoot some time lapses. We have an hour before dinner. I was planning this tomorrow because we have a lot more free time, but there's an hour before dinner so I might catch something, although I'm not sure it's gonna be enough for 240 time lapse or hyperlapse pictures. If you know why I need 240, write in the comments and let me know why. Otherwise, I'm gonna tell you tomorrow. Let's go shoot a hyperlapse. So it turns out I picked a pretty difficult hyperlapse. You saw I changed my focus points two times and also instead of just moving them equally throughout the frame, I also trying to do kind of like the easy in and easy out thing so that it slowly changes target. We'll see how that looks later. The problem is I don't have my laptop with me so I won't be able to preview this hyperlapse until we get home. So this practice isn't really practice because I'm just gonna be as noob tomorrow shooting these hyperlapses as I am today but anyway now it's time for dinner okay so we're done with all our activities for today we just had dinner it was wonderful I have a meeting nothing you want to be part of I guess I might do another time high time relapse hyperlapse like long exposure with a hyperlapse I guess maybe otherwise see you guys in the morning where we're gonna do the main body of this vlog I don't know how long this vlogs been going. anyway see you tomorrow Good morning people, as you noticed, I did manage to shoot the, timer, the hyperlapse last night. It was fun, it was pretty late, it was pretty tiring, but we got it down. Uh, I just realized that I should probably analyze these hyperlapses, tell you which settings I used, what was the easy part, what was the hard part, and things like that. I guess I'll do that when I come home and analyze the hyperlapses. Meanwhile, I'm off, I'm gonna find the riverside. There's plenty of beautiful things to, to video. I'm gonna find the riverside. There's like a fortress over there. Maybe do a hyperlapse of that and also see it. I haven't been there before. So I'm looking forward to it. Let's go. Okay, so the reason I want to shoot 240 pictures per hyperlapse is because I want a 10 second 24 FPS video. Why do I want a 10 second video? Is because of the site called Black Box, which pretty much sends out your footage to all these stock video sites and sells it for you but their minimum requirement is 10 seconds so i can't really do short hyperlapses but anyway short hyperlapses are more boring to watch because the longer ones kind of draw you in because they, you can actually see what's going on instead of it being kind of like loop over however i do believe that i have like faces and logos and things in the hyperlapse that i'll have to remove picture by picture so that's gonna add more working time but that's the price you pay for quality video the good side is that it is in 6,000 times 4,000 pixel resolution i do believe which means my hyperlapses will be in nearly 6k which might make it more sellable anyway i found this beautiful park you see that monument over there probably not i'm gonna try to take a picture of it since it's not very big, I might do kind of like a come close to it, do a full rotation around it, and then walk away on the other side to make it a longer height, perhaps. I guess I'll see as I go.
Okay guys, well I'm about halfway, actually almost done with the hyperlapse as it is right now. But you see that gate over there? I figured I might as well just inch my way all the way around and make a longer time lapse. If it's 15 seconds, 20 seconds, doesn't matter. But it's gonna be more quality because it goes through one gate and then the tunnel and then another gate and eventually makes its way to the church, which is pretty cool. We still have three something hours before the rest of the program. That's lunch and rehearsal and eventually our show. So we have plenty of time to do that. Man, that was one mundane hyperlapse. It's just like you step, you click, you step, you click. It gets so boring. It took me, what, two hours to make it? And it's gonna last for 15, maybe 20 seconds. Plus the floor was uneven. And there are obstacles coming from the camera. So if he type hyperlapse, but it better pay off. Anyway, I think I have a break now. Maybe shoot some classic B-roll. We got a really nice park here. I'll show you around. And then you have the whole city wall thing and the river down below. B-roll shot. All that hyperlapsing deserves an ice cream, don't you agree? These King ice creams are really awesome and surprisingly enough, they're significantly cheaper than back home in Saria though. Cheers. Okie dokie, well we're back. The singing was great. It was a great concert. One of the best we had in a while now. Too bad it wasn't for a tournament. It was the honorary thing, so. So now what I wanted to do is go through each of the four hyperlapses that I made in Belgrade and analyze each one, see which settings they were shot with. And just explain a little bit behind them what I like, what I don't like, how they turned out. Overall, they're pretty good. But meanwhile, let's open up said mail. There. Much mail. Pretty sure I know what the big one is because I didn't order anything else of this size. It's probably the cage for the A72. <laughs> By the way, this knife I got in a local shop for like a buck. <laughs> Does his job. For the first decent hyperlapse of the city, I'm very happy. I just did basic editing in Lightroom, exported the photos, sent them into Adobe After Effects, and compiled it into a video. Now it is jerky, it's not perfect. Even though it was shot on a tripod, I didn't have a level. If you want to do this perfectly, you need a really steady tripod. You need like a ball head with a level on it so you can measure and make sure everything's straight. You need to be following points exactly to the point. I just kind of set something roughly in the time lapse at one of the focus points and was kind of following around. So the point was here to get it done, to kind of get my practice down. So I can't say I never did a hyperlapse and the result is good. The lighting did change a little bit as you get towards the evening and the sun goes away and I had to adjust a little bit for that in After Effects. But overall, it's a great hyperlapse and who knows, maybe it will sell. Now this was shot at 1 8 of a second so I could get those smooth people so that the whole hyperlapse looks a lot more fluid. To accommodate for that, I had to have an f-stop of 22 all the way up and I even went down from my ISO from the native 100 to like 64 or whatever the, the low rate is. Well, here's the cage. Looks cagey, looks stable, it's cold. Must be good aluminum or not good aluminum. Not good aluminum is probably also cold. So we're gonna put the camera inside this later and uh, test it out how well it fits, how easy it is to use uh, with all the buttons and everything. The second hyperlapse I did that night in one, in one of the famous squares. Now the difference with this one is that I did it handheld. I didn't have a tripod, I didn't wanna carry it around town with me that afternoon. So I was holding it in my hand, kinda in one position, steadily from my chest, shooting, you know, again, a single focus point. But as you notice in these hyperlapses, hyperlapses, I move around and then I realized that I want to change my focus point. So I kind of try to do a transition. It's still pretty jerky, but considering this is my first time doing so, it's okay. You can see, you know, me changing focus points as it gets into uncomfortable places in the hyperlapse, which is why some of the jerkiness appears in the first place. And this is an SD card for my friend who's beginning out with photography and I'm helping get some of his equipment together. This was shot at 150th 
of a second because it was handheld and I was afraid to get, you know, handshake blur if I had it any lower. The ISO was at 1000. And so I believe the aperture was wide open because it's pretty dark. Also for my photography friend who got a new camera which was missing a lens cap. Now he has a lens cap. Now I'm surprised how well this hyperlapse came out considering it was shot handheld. I'm even liking it better than the first one which was shot completely on a tripod. Maybe because I already had an idea of what I was doing. But there are certain frames which are extra jerky and I want to find out why that is because you have like you know 24 48 or more frames which are flowing smoothly and then all of a sudden you just have one that's just out of place and I'm not sure why that happens but I'm gonna wrap my brain around it and find out why so that I can avoid those in the future I'm really liking this and if there's potential either higher engagement or they get sold obviously I'm gonna do this more it does take a lot more effort than your average video clip but if it pays off it's worth the effort this is a phone stylus, also for a friend. I have so many of my friends who are not so good at online shopping, so I sometimes get things for them. Even though, you know, shop shipping and delivery tends to be more expensive, some things you just cannot get here. Matte, black, box. Honestly, don't remember what this was. Ah, it's my new wallet. I've been seeing these wallets going around and they're kind of cool. You know, they got a metal frame. I think it's aluminum yeah it's cold to the touch so it's not plastic it's aluminum it's got a little button on the top and you pull the button and your credit card slide out yeah i like it very small and compact so i don't have to carry this bulky dude around with me wherever i go okay my third hyperlapse was the first hyperlapse of the next morning i don't know why i picked this statue the lighting wasn't great the sun was out for a while already and it was really bright it was dark on one side shooting against the sun and it was bright on the other side and I don't know, I guess of that statue, it's a decent hyperlapse, but overall I didn't like it particularly. Again, it was one over eight, probably at F22 and some low ISO, nothing particularly special. Uh, it didn't have as many jerkinesses. It was shot on a tripod. Maybe that's the reason. Ah, here are a bunch of wedding USB boxes that I give to my clients who order weddings and the last hyperlapse was the really long one it took me over two hours to make this because I started off I was coming to the castle which was apparently relatively famous as I was getting there I, I put down my camera to walk through the gate I, I saw a church in the distance so I made that my focus point but as I was getting closer to it I saw there was a long walking path that went around through several tunnels as I, I was like screw it you know I'm not gonna make this for 10 seconds I'm just gonna do the whole walking street and there are some parts of it like when you see the cage pass in front of the camera that don't look awesome but they are the full experience so maybe if I put it up on black box to sell I'll cut up cut it up into two or three clips um, you know kind of picking the highlights and getting rid of some of the ugly parts and we'll see but as an experiment playing around with hyperlapses I'm really happy with the way it turned out the last item for today is in a box with wipes I ah, it's my my protector glass for my new phone okay guys well that's it for the four hyperlapses that we did in Belgrade it was great fun it was very frustrating just because it took so long doing the same repetitive work but watching it here is very rewarding and I think if it's done more precisely it can have some amazing results I'm gonna play around with these try to improve them a little bit and I'll let you know in a future video how they fared on stock websites if they got accepted in the first place I assume because of all the people uh, faces and famous places it's probably gonna have to go under editorial which means it's not as profitable but that's just something you have to do when you're shooting in the city city with a lot of people and you can't get a model release form from each of them so thank you guys for watching my attempts and experiments with photography I hope you learned something or were entertained by my video and as always I'm gonna see you guys next week should stop waving this thing around I look kind of menacing like Ukrainian mafia <laughs>